Hi everyone, welcome back to this channel. Today we have another colorway for this Adidas Ultra Boost 21. We start with the unboxing and here we have some of my sizes. You can see they are rated for men's and they are made in China, this pair. About this colorway, I have to say that I was expecting a bit more uh, darker color, but I still like them this way. I will describe this color like very old military pants, maybe 60 years ago. That is the colorway on these sneakers. I always like it, the colorways that we can find in Ultravus. They are very unique and, and strange and beautiful at the same time. In this shot we can see the logo a bit farther. We, we're gonna see how reflective they are, these materials that we can find on this sneaker. Here we can see the sole, very interesting um, colors use it on this sole. We have some exposed foam and at least two types of rubber. My only problem with this sole will be the exposed parts where you can see the foam. And a bit later I will explain why I don't like that exposed foam in all the soles. I don't care about the brand or the model of the sneaker. The yellowish color is a plastic piece of the torsion system. And now we can have a look of the insole and I will say it's regular, it's exactly the same like we've seen so far in Ultra Boost 20 and Ultra Boost 21 this year. This pair that I received this time from Adidas, I'm seeing that it's made in China and it has some issues. As you can see, it has those spots where the thickness is close to zero to be honest so some insoles with these issues i don't think they are supposed to have it in a store you know for selling so i don't know why i received it this but for me this one is not okay you know because when you pay 180 euros you know it's not okay that is the full price and they shouldn't uh, sell this kind of uh, items Here we can see the interior, as always, very thin layer of foam over the Ultra Boost material. And the shot with the interior label. And here is the right foot, because I'm curious to see how is the quality in both of them. Here we can see the exterior labels, they are similar with other Ultra Boost that we've seen so far. Nothing changed here. I noticed that the quality is consistent in this second uh, sneaker. I didn't find bad stitching or uh, too much glue, so everything seems fine with these sneakers. Although they are made in China. This is the first time that I'm seeing Ultra Boost 21 this year, which is made in China. I guess the only problem that I had with them was uh, those two holes that I found on the insoles on the left foot. Here I'm checking a bit better the midsole, mm, I didn't see any, any problems with uh, the midsole, it seems to be fine. We can see here the other insole, this time it doesn't have any issues, so at least this one is well made. And now the interior, I didn't find any problems with the stitching or the gluing. We see that around the ankle and the heel we have some padding. It's not too much, but it's more than enough. In this shot we can see the sole. I didn't find any issues with the, the gluing in this case. In all this Ultra Boost 21 we see that they are using continental rubber. And this piece of plastic which is named uh, LEP and is the torsion system from this year.
here I'm checking this midsole is the first thing that I didn't like it on these sneakers this year because it's much more rigid than I was expecting so less cushioning and less comfort because of that seeing a bit bigger stack you will expect to have more comfort and a lot more cushioning and it was not the case so yeah this is how they are this year here we can see a bit better the laces the size of them and the prime knit a bit closer we can see here the stitching around this cage everything seems to be fine and I see here very thin uh, thread use it here I hope it will last enough here I'm pointing with my finger those two panels where they are merged they are staying right over my toes and I didn't like that this year I think that is an issue and they should uh, fix it next year at least those merging panels they were in, in the past in Ultra Boost 20 for example and this year they are and that is a problem because you are having unnecessary discomfort because of that here we can see the difference in between these panels everyone has his purpose this is how it looks this uh, sock fit here we can see a bit the thickness of these uh, cages which are made with a mixture in between rubber and plastic as we can see the thickness in between those panels of prime knit is different some of them they are very thin and others they are quite thick as this one We can see here the laces a bit better I didn't like it, the pins of these uh, laces they are very flimsy you can bend them very easily so I do prefer the classic ones I wish they were come back those because these ones I don't like them sorry but I don't like them And finally we have the weight test you can see here the weight in grams and under we can see it in ounces this is the weight of them and here we have a comparison with uh, New Balance 1080 version 9 which is from 2019 and a quick physical comparison in between them we can see here the difference in between them on the soles Ultraboost has a bit more exposed foam and I didn't like that in any sneakers even uh, New Balance I personally think that the outsole it should be made only with rubber not exposed foam that is only because we want to have safety for our foot I feel that there are many ways to lose some weight on these sneakers and chopping the outsole that is not a solution not a good one at least Here is a comparison in between these uh, insoles, they are a bit different. I like a bit better the one from New Balance because this has more cushioning. The other one is a bit too dense from Adidas.
The interiors, they are very similar, very thin layer of foam over the midsole material. We can see the tongues and I have to say that they are both of them well made and I like both of them, although they are completely different. I normally like a bit more padding on the tongue because I have a bigger instep than most of the people, so that matters for me. Here we can see the structure, how this uh, heel is made. Almost entire is rigid and only a very thin collar is soft and I didn't have issues with that. In uh, Adidas is different, as you can see, the soft area is a bit larger. In other pairs, I noticed that area, which is supposed to be uh, soft, a bit too stiff, but in this case, I didn't have that issues, so I'm glad. And now we have some on-fit shots. We can see here my arch and my instep. That's why I'm doing this rating because it matters the shape of the fit that I have. For others, it could be different, you know, but that's why I'm showing my fit because it's important to know, I think at least. Every time that I take this Ultraboost 21 on my feet, I suddenly miss the Ultraboost 20 from the last year because those were, although they had a bit less stack, the cushioning was a bit better in those. I wish that density on the midsole wouldn't change this year and had a bit more cushioning than the past year, you know. Here we can see where my toes are, right under those merging panels, so that's why I have that discomfort with them. Here we have the comparison with New Balance. For me, the difference is colossal. Uh, New Balance has much more cushioning and I like that a lot. Another thing that I would like to point out is that New Balance are a bit more wider. So I like them a bit more just because of that. I have my feet a bit wider, so that matters for me. And now it came the time to explain why I don't like exposed foam on the sole. We can see here uh, New Balance has plenty of rubber, but it still has those lines where it's exposed foam. And what happened? Well, I managed to get a small pin made with wood, I don't know from where, I guess from park, and it just poked my my sole there. Maybe for many of you this this is not an important thing, but I, I thought I should uh, show this in my video and explain why I'm always asking for a rubber sole and not with exposed foam. I think the safety is important for everyone. Not everyone with, uh, will run with these sneakers only on asphalt. So these things can't happen, you know? And you can see here how much exposed foam has Ultra Boost 21. I honestly feel lucky that it wasn't larger than that. Here I'm trying to show you exactly how much uh, space I have in my toe box so it's around two to and a half centimeters and that will be around one uh, inch you can use the rule of thumb and check it also if you need for me they are true to size both of them and here i'm trying to show you how reflective they are in comparison with new balance I would say the difference is <laughs> huge. 
This might not be very important for those that they are wearing these sneakers as a lifestyle sneaker. But for those that they are running with them, yeah, that that could be something important, you know, to have some reflectiveness in the dark. And now some on-fit shots from a lower angle, just to see them a bit better how they are. So I guess it's time for pros and cons. Well, for pros, as always, the colorways, there are so many. Usually they have around 20 here in Spain. In other places like the United States, you can find them around 40 colors. So plenty to choose. Usually they have a good quality. Those made in uh, Vietnam, they don't have issues, or at least I didn't find. But this time with uh, Made in China, I've seen that that insole has some some holes in in the insole which i didn't like them the rest of it it was okay i can i cannot complain i didn't see bad stitching or uh, problems with the gluing and i think this will be for pros unfortunately for cons where well, we we have some cons here because i didn't like it that uh, exposed foam in the sole i didn't like it those merging panels of prying it that are staying over my uh, my toes it causes me discomfort they don't have too much cushioning not like the one i was expecting they don't have too much comfort again because of that missile is too dense inside you know and because of that they are losing in comfort so that was a bad move from adidas this year the price it stays 180 euros from time to time you can find them in a uh, in some sales or offers you know mm, this will be it you know if you like them you can go and try them see for yourself how they are fitting to your feet if you like them enough if you don't well choose something else you know what can i say or wait a few months and buy the newer version which it should come in january maybe i would like to remind that not everyone has the same arch and the same instep like me so maybe they won't fit the same for them and that's a good thing you know because maybe they can use them and i can't you know so it's up to you try them see how you like them try them with other sneakers in your feet if it's possible to make a comparison in between them and if you if you are happy with them just go ahead and buy them i like to leave here my opinion because for some of you it's useful sometimes you know not for everyone maybe but if I can help somebody, I will do it gladly, you know. And if you have comments, obviously, you can ask questions and I will try to answer them. I know that many of us are doing online shopping. I am one of those people. I like to find the uh, things at a good price. So a review like this for me can be useful sometimes, you know. So that is the purpose of these videos that I make. So that being said, thank you very much for watching. See you next time. If you have any questions, please let me know. Please don't forget to subscribe because it's very important to me. And have a nice day.